Juliet is with Peter Florence. How are you doing, sir? I'm do doing fine, thank you. And today is the most historic day of your life. Today is the most important day of all days, right? It's the Battle of Hastings again. <laughs> 1066. No, I became an American citizen this morning. This morning? 7.30. After 34 years of living here. 34 years of being in denial. Well, <laughs> finally got you I felt I was border. a Brit, but I... I do love, love this place, you know. Well, um, America or...? No, America. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably going to die here. Working in quantum, I probably could die here, you know. <laughs> but, um, no, it's... You know, I've been here 34 years. I've, I've, you know, I, I like the place. Yeah. Uh, have you always been in Fort Lauderdale? Or uh, you yeah, Fort Lauderdale. Lauderdale. I've all worked in the marine industry. Um, and what do you do for Quantum at the moment? Well, I joined John 20 years ago, and uh, I run the refit side of the business. Oh, wow. OK. Uh, Which is the tricky side, I would imagine. Yeah, you deal with the customers more. OK, yeah. Whereas John's dealing with the big ship builders, I'm dealing with the customers, and uh, I think most of the customers like a London accent. Yeah, so how did two English boys meet in Fort Lauderdale and start a business? Oh, well, I worked for a shipyard in Miami. Which one? And uh, Merrill Stevens on the Miami River. Yep. We handled all the big boats in the world, the top yachts. John was working up the north, and I used to meet him, and uh, I shouldn't say this, but he's, he was the most honest person. This is, we got a lot of sleazy people in this industry. And John was really on, honest, you know. We used to meet in Miami every year, and I'd go, how you doing, John? And he goes, oh, I'm having a lousy year. I've lost 60,000. He goes, how are you doing? I go, oh, we made a million and a half, you know. But I was dealing with the big boats. John was dealing with the small boats. And he was servicing... Nyads, which Nyad, is the, the other stone. Oh, that's a and I, is I that was, your competitor? Uh, or is that the other it's company? It's not... We ain't got any competitors. We, we got other people who make stabilizers and all that, but we're in a class of our own. Yeah. Um, you know, Ferrari doesn't look upon Kia as being a competitive, you know? Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, so, but John was an honest guy, and I, I was working for a British company, he was working for an American company. Uh, we were doing a lot better. I always liked him. Yeah. Why was he doing because he was just basically servicing... We worked on smaller boats. I worked on big boats. Warships and big, uh, oh, okay. big yachts. Um, when the Brits started to expand, taking over other companies, I thought, I've come to America to get away from Britain. <laughs> now I had all these Brits breathing down my back, you know, and... Uh, I wasn't happy, and eventually I, I resigned from the British company and I went along to see John. I said, hey, you got a position for me on the company? And he goes, I haven't got a position for you, we form a new company and we can be partners. So I joined him and I brought all my big customers into the company. Anyhow, so how jo John's incredibly honest person. Yeah. He's I only met him at Mets uh, a couple of weeks uh, a couple of months ago. Yeah. And was it a month ago? Or was it like it was a few yeah, weeks ago? Yeah. And um, yeah, it's amazing. There are so many people in this industry who are so quick and running around and trying to close the deal and do this. Yeah. Instantly with John, 
gave me time, sat down, engaged in the conversation, and it was like, oh my God, yeah. Was... It's, John's amazing. You know, I'm an older guy, I'm 74. Still but he impresses still me, working. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that, really. I like what we do, you know. Yeah, I like right. talking to customers, I like engineering. You should be out on the boat fishing. No, oh, I hate going to sea. <laughs> I, I, going to sea is crazy. You should only go to sea in a grey ship and shoot at each other. That's the best way to go to sea. I'm ex-Navy. Oh, yeah, uh, 25 years in the British Navy. So that was your introduction to the industry? Well, into marriage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you've got to realise stabilisers are not used in most navies, but the British and the Japanese Navy have been stabilised for 50 years. American Navy, no, but the British Navy, yes. Why? This is why our ships are better at sea than the Americans and everybody else. The Americans couldn't have fought in the Falklands. They haven't got stabilizers. I think the Argentinians calculated, let's attack the Brits during the bad weather. But they didn't work out. The Brits have all got stabilizers, so they go along straight. Wait, 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 you were in active service then? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, where, did, what, where did you fight? Uh, all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> but I ended up, I married my American wife, Robin, who's over there, uh, brought her to America, uh, to Britain, and three weeks later, I had to sail for the Falklands, so it killed our honeymoon. The Falklands was basically a pointless war, wasn't it? It was just that chip. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, she, she, yeah. Not my favourite Prime Minister. Yeah. But she's, uh, you know, she said, hey, we're going to war, and we go to war, you know. So, obviously, we won the Falklands. Yeah. Although it's never really a victory, is it? It was just. What do you mean it wasn't a victory? It's not like the Second World War, it's not hell, it's like a great... Oh, if you was down there, it was hell. Was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was... It's the Falklands Option was before my, I was born. Yeah. 70... Uh, that was showing my ignorance. Yeah, I don't know, I have to look it up. I've looked at my medals okay. to see what it was. <laughs> but, um, it... No, if you was down there, it was bloody hard, you know. Yeah. And I uh, had two of my best friends killed while I was down there. So it was pretty was it emotional. Was it on land or was it purely just a sea fight? Oh, we was at sea, we was fighting and the soldiers were fighting ashore. Uh, and the Air Force, we were all fighting. This is amazing, and my generation knows so little about the Falklands War, they know so little yeah. about the Falklands, they know so little about actual war. And what they're saying is that my generation, we haven't had a war in our lifetime. Yeah. And we're soft, we're, we're complacent, we're, we're, we expect, we're too, we're too entitled because we haven't had that kind of war. Is it, yeah, it's terror, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it was, yeah especially if you just got married. <laughs> and so, how long were you, so you just got married? And yeah. How long were you apart from? Uh, seven months. And then. When I'm down there a couple of months, my wife says I'm pregnant. So <laughs> I don't know how you did it, that. <laughs> it was like, oh my goodness. You know, and uh, when we came back, I'm the chief of the boat, so I should be down the engine room. But the captain says, I would like you on the forecastle in charge of the guard. So we come into Portsmouth Harbour and there's tugs, all the water sprays going on um, and as we come to long tide the jetty my wife is supposed to be in America having the baby and someone from the guard says I think that's your wife on the jetty chief and I go shut up you know and then you, have, you wouldn't have seen her would you no I 
she was in America, my wife. And then I, the petty officer of the guard goes, Chief, that is definitely your wife on the jetty. And we come along to the jetty, the gangway goes over and the Admiral of the fleet's supposed to come on. And he stepped aside and my wife came on board in the big fur coat, a week away from being, having the baby. Like, everybody on that warship knew my wife would be on the jetty except me. And they kept it quiet for two months. Yeah, so it's pretty good. As, I'm married to a Yank, so the British Navy, you know, my wife was pin-up of their squadron, you know. <laughs> just, just, you know, I'm married to... We're doing nylon stockings and chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> we were down the Falklands and we're getting no mail from England and then suddenly a Russian trawler had come alongside us and said, we got a parcel for Chief Florence and it'd be a big package of Pe Pepperidge Farm cookies, tasteless coffee, Doomsbury cartoons, and, you know, we'd bring this parcel on and the other destroyers would find out about it and they'd all close in because <laughs> we're getting a food parcel yeah. from America. So you were there for 25 years. You did you go as high as you could? In the, in the uh, no, I, if, if I hadn't been so left wing, you know, I would have gone higher, but I went as pretty really good. That, that held you back? Oh, yeah, it's a class system in Britain, you know. Yeah, so this is something you don't have in America? No, no, coming to America, there's no class no, system. No class. Uh, I think the only class system we've got in America is uh, your knowledge, you know, you. Well, that's what's great about America. That's great. Meet anybody and make it. And yeah. The class system in England. I mean, I, I fortunately have a very, I, I fortunately have a very um, pump in my mouth kind of accent. So I, 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 I have that ascendance of privilege. So to speak. Yeah. But somebody who's from Liverpool or Glasgow or something like that, you're saying they would have a harder time. No, I, I think having a Cockney accent is the best. Because they think of Michael Caine, Judd Law, you know. The London accent is definitely the best accent to get on in America. Uh, you know, I've been here so many years, I've fixed boats for the wealthiest people in the world, and they think I know all about Lucas Ignition on their British sports cars. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, you've got that, that South London just no nonsense. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they all think you're Michael Caine, you know. <laughs> and I work for the wealthiest people in America, you know, and the world. That's what's great about this industry. Um, speaking to um, Phil Purcell the other day. Yeah. MISF. And he was saying, you know, on his phone, he can call up maybe 20 of the world's best entrepreneurs yeah. because of this industry. And it, this industry is the collection of not wealth, but the, most, the brightest minds. Yeah. Well, it can be. Yeah. Well, you know, me and my wife mix with some of the... My wife's told Abramovich's food is sucked. <laughs> it's it's sucked. Old, in Monaco. <laughs> and he says, well, I'm trying to please everybody. <laughs> I, Oh, please, everybody. Yeah. It was like, you know. That takes some balls. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gee, I was lucky. I thought I was going to be wearing concrete wellies in Monaco, you know. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm sat there opposite a load of Russians and top people, and then I could notice they were all looking behind me, and I can suddenly hear this conversation. Is there something wrong with the food? And... Uh, I can hear my voice, my wife's voice, just going, I don't like this black stuff on the chicken. You know, and he goes, well, that's the best Russian beluga, caviar. It costs so many thousand euros a can. And she said, well, I still don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and they were all watching my wife behind me, you know, and he's... Oh, you can't take her out, can you? No, no, she's got, <laughs> but they all like her because she's American. Everybody likes Americans. Yeah? Yeah, they do. It's a pleasure having you on the show, sir. I have one more question. Can you 
you ask him to talk about Meryl Stevens in Miami back in that day? Because uh, it sounded like they were really uh, amazing yeah. shipyard, and now they've really oh, lost was. their way. It's Meryl Stevens. Okay. Nowadays, is a shadow of what he used yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah. Back in the heyday. When, when I came to Merrill Stevens, it was the top boatyard in the world. The world? World. I can remember... That, that, that place opposite the airport? Yeah, yeah. The best place in the world? In the best place. Wow, okay. All the Dutch companies, the Van Lantz, the De Friesers, all their kids came to work in the yard to learn the trade. At Merrill Stevens? In Merrill Stevens. Um, I don't know which ones are still alive, but they all came there. I can remember Van Lent and De Vries, the last seven boats they built were all in our yard. That's how good it was. It was fabulous. The boat could come in, we could do everything on the boat. That we didn't have to bring in anybody from outside. That's how. This is what, back in the 80s? Uh, yeah, 84 onwards. So was Fort Lauderdale what it is today? No, that was a lesser, you know. So everybody went to Miami. So Miami was boat centre. Oh, it's about, yeah, boat centre. So how, how the hell did Fort Well, all the, get the Miami River, all the shipyards there, up the so, Miami so, so River, so they've all gone. They've just gone? Yeah, with, you know, development and all that. And uh, um, traffic driving into Miami, it, you know, it takes so long to get in there. Yeah, so you take it up to Fort Lauderdale yeah. where it's a little Ma less. I, I work, I was like Huckleberry Finn. I came from miserable England to work for Merrill Stevens. I used to sit there with my feet in the Miami River and a fishing rod. Where during, did you live that time? Uh, I lived in um, Golden Glades, just okay. out there. It was so wonderful, and I got a number of my English friends who had come to America, married American Navy guys, and I got them all to come and work with me down there. So, so we had a pretty good crew, you know. But it was so... Um, Miami Vice, they filmed everything there. That was you know? that period. Period, yeah. yeah. It was so wonderful. We had Jack Cousteau in there with the Calypso, you know, and we, we uh, did a refit on... I have no idea. Cousteau. Cousteau. Oh, Cousteau. Oh, Cousteau. It's the way I say it, you know. Don't you understand Aston. my English? <laughs> you know. And he, he, he came in with his boat and we... Us Brits could handle it, but the French were drinking nine o'clock. The crew were drinking nine. And the Americans were like, can't handle their liquor. And we rebuilt the boat and did everything. He left our yard, and the first message we got back to him, he got back to us, was from Tahiti. We can't believe how quickly it got there. And he goes, you did a great job, you know. And so God, from, we, had, we had everybody, you know. I Malcolm. thought Jack Cousteau was a fictional character. No, he's the great, you know, greatest diver, everything. You know, Monaco, you can, the, the Jack Cousteau Museum there. Wow. Yeah. So we had there, and we, we get Malcolm Forbes. Um, lots of film stars would come there, you know, because their yachts are being Johnny Depp. Yacht used to go to America. Uh, He's not a bankrupt. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so built up in Miami. You think it's the, the traffic and this? It's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Hurricane Andrew changed everything. Okay. Yeah. So that was where? 88? 88, yeah. 88. Yeah. Oh, it was fabulous, you know, especially coming from England. Suddenly you're at Huckleberry Finn in Miami, you yeah. know. It was so warm, so nice. All the people I work for, they're all southerners, you know, old people, old Mr. Merrill, you know, in the war, he, he built Liberty ships and all that. And he used to like me, because every Friday I used to go up to his office and we'd sit down and drink a bottle of whiskey. He said, I hate yachts. I hate <laughs> yachts. And he's got the premier yard. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And um, I, I think one of the things that this industry is missing with my generation is the history of how it used to be. And we're all charging down this social media. And oh, yeah, yeah, social media. That's the one, you know. And faster boats and axe bows and plastic and yeah. this and this and this and technology and integration and sound systems and navigation and this and The roots of the industry can't be forgotten. No, no, it's it's a fabulous industry. Fabulous. I spent 25 years in the Navy, but guess what? I wish I'd been in this industry. <laughs> it's just, just yeah. wonderful, you know? Sir, thank you. And congratulations on some of the American citizens. Well, I'll tell you how that works out next year. Well,